This is a quick tutorial on how to get physically based rendering into Godot using Blender and some downloaded assets from Sketchfab. So this is the end result we're looking for, but in order to achieve this we first need the model itself, which in my case I've got from uh, Sketchfab. This nice gentleman has provided it under a uh, Creative Commons attribution license, which means um, we can use it in most projects without uh, worrying too much except for um, attributing them really. So I've gone ahead and downloaded it and if you open that up it comes in a uh, source folder and some texture folders with uh, a couple of images contained. Now for PBR rendering it's very typical to have multiple textures. Some textures give you color information and the other ones give you light information so this light scatters as nicely as this one does. So if you go into the source folder, there is going to be a model in the DAE format. Now this might vary, but we're just going to go ahead and open this one up in Blender. Uh, in my case, I've got Blender 293, but other versions in the future might still work the same way. You just got to try that out. So we go to import DAE, and I'm going to drag that file, drag and drop style into this, and I'm going to open that. Now you can see um, we've got a skull shape but the material doesn't appear to be right even if we switch to viewport shading which gives you the material uh, view it's not quite right so let's select it and you can see in the materials tab right here it's got a single material sign a rosa material and it uses nodes apparently so let's have a look at the nodes and see why that material isn't set up quite the way we would like and now you can kind of see what's going on. Um, it's just a principal BSDF. No color input is uh, set here. So we can basically remove these colors. And it's kind of black. I wonder, it's it's the alpha. It's the alpha, right? So sometimes the um, importers do this. They forget to set the alpha to 1.0. If you set to 1.0, now you can see the mesh itself. It doesn't have any color yet. But that's a lot better than we had before. Now, to get some color information in, let's drag and drop some textures. So I'll drop the um, albedo first, this is the color information. Color information textures usually come in the color space sRGB, so this is fine to keep this. Just got to connect it to the base color, and now you can see we're getting somewhere. Now, if we import the material texture next, like so, then you can see it also tries to do sRGB but this is not the way you would want this. Um, everything except for color information is usually set to none color because that's how the program ex um, exports it. So let's drag that into metallic and now we're getting somewhere. Now if you do the whole setup for um, all the textures you get, um, then it looks something like this. This is what I've done. So every uh, color except for the albedo one is set to uh, linear or non-linear or non-color uh, and we've connected all these up except for the um, normal map it's important to have a normal map mapping node in between before you connect it but that's about it now you'll probably notice once you try to connect these up the ambient occlusion map up here it doesn't have any input into the principled BSDF node in Blender um, but we still would want to have this in Godot because it still gives you some color information and the workaround for this is, in Blender at least, um, you add a dummy, uh, like a, a dummy node, I usually use a, an image texture node such as this, select it, say make group and now it creates this group for it and now you can basically delete it again, select the group's inputs and it's important to call the input occlusion and you can remove the outputs because they're not really needed so this one is important that is called occlusion close the group and connect the ambient occlusion map to this now the other important thing is to call the group gltf settings plural and that way uh, the exporter now knows if you export the G to gltf to also include the ambient occlusion map even though it's not part of this material. So speaking of exporting let's try and get this into Godot. So let's go ahead and click on file export whoops export gltf and I've 
kept the default presets, just changed to um, the GLTF file format, but you could also use like GLB, it doesn't really matter, both work. Um, and then click on export. And if you switch over to Godot now, um, you can see in the file manager we have a GLTF file created. And I've got gone ahead and just placed my blend file in here as well, but it doesn't need to be that way. Um, Blender, uh, Godot is going to import this GLTF file and extract uh, the materials from it. In our case, it's going to be two. Uh, the one we've changed is the rosa material. So if you look in Blender, you can see rosa material right here. It um, will pop up in Godot with the same name. And if we open that, we can now see albedo texture has been assigned. Same goes for metallic, roughness, and even ambient occlusion if you've done everything correctly in that regard. Now, the skull itself, if we open it, seems to have the material applied this, the correct way. There is just no shading because there is no light. So let's drag and drop it into a scene that actually has some lights. And look at that. This is the physical based rendering setup that we want it. Seems to have done it correctly. So yeah, that's how you do uh, an import from a Blender uh, PBR setup into Godot. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching.